This is Blind Dog with Sound of Tech once again, and today I have yet another mining video for you. Today we're going to be taking a look at none other than the brand new graphics card from Radeon, the RX 6800, and its mining performance in Ethereum. Now, for this channel in particular, we do cover gaming as well as mining on all of these graphics cards. So if you are interested in the gaming portion, come back later and to make sure you get that video hit the sub and the notification that'll be coming later this week but a real quick note on this GPU all of these initial tests are with unoptimized miners and no BIOS modding available currently so if you're interested in those as well for the mining portion make sure you hit that sub and that notification because we'll be covering it when we have access to those tools without further ado let's talk about mining ethereum on the RX 6800. Try to feed the bears. To start things off, let's go over the test bench. We will have links to all the parts down in the description below. We're running an ASRock Tai Chi B550 motherboard with 16 gigs of Trident Z Neo clocked at uh, 3600 megahertz and with your timings at 18 CAS latency. That being said, we also have the brand new AMD Ryzen 5600X, Ryzen 5, and we'll be having a separate review for that coming out as well. So once again, make sure you hit that sub and notification if you're interested in it. Awesome new stuff coming to the channel, awesome new parts coming out from all of our favorite technology companies and it couldn't be a better time of the year i hope you get your hands on at least one of the parts that you have on your wish list for christmas and let's talk about mining ethereum so the big notes about mining ethereum is that we are looking at return on investment meaning that the metrics that we're trying to figure out at the end of the day is which GPU has the best ROI or return on investment. And then that's how you would determine which GPU sh you should buy. A lot of this will come down to if you can get the cards at retail cost and so on and so forth. So in the current uh, market, you're probably still going to be better off getting the RX 5700 or 5700 XT just based on availability. But once these RX 6800s become available at retail, is it worth purchasing them over the 5700 series? Well, let's talk first a little bit about what's changed with the new models. The RX 6800 is a seven nanometer uh, GPU with RDNA 2 architecture. The boost clock is up to 2105 megahertz with the game clock of up to 1815 megahertz. Now, it has 16 gigabytes, and this is the important part, of course, when we start talking about mining, it has 16 gigabytes of GDDR6. This will be important because basically you're never gonna have to worry about the DAG for years which is awesome. The current DAG is going to be kicking some four gigabyte cards off uh, ETC, which is Ethereum Classic, is going to be making some modifications to fix that and allow you to mine with four gigabyte cards on them. And a miner called LOL Miner is currently working on a miner to still support four gig cards on the regular or, you know, the Ethereum blockchain. But that is all speculative at this time, so having more memory is probably just going to make everything that much easier for you if you're trying to mine Ethereum. Now the memory clock is 16 gigabits per second effective. You do have a maximum of four displays. Of course, for mining, we're not that worried about it, but you do have uh, two display ports, one HDMI and a USB-C. I love seeing the USB-C on there. That is amazing. It's PCIe Express 4.0. For mining, this shouldn't be that big of a deal either. You can knock down that PCI uh, gen depending on you know your mining rig and so on and so forth. This particular card is the reference model, but it was built by a third party vendor, which is Sapphire. I think that's important to note because there was a big hubbub about not allowing third party AIBs to launch on the same day as the reference models. That doesn't mean that the third party AIBs didn't actually get um, a chance to make cards. It's a little different than NVIDIA. As NVIDIA, when they have their reference models, that is for NVIDIA only. Like NVIDIA doesn't share their reference model designs out with their board partners to manufacture additional reference cards. 
as opposed to AMD, who shares out their reference designs with their third-party vendors so that they can build more reference cards, or at least in theory. Now, what they are limiting is the ability for them to come out with custom coolers until the 25th. The good news for you guys, and I'll leave a link with the Amazon link down below, is you will have another chance to buy these custom cooled versions on the 25th or in four days uh, from this video. Pretty awesome. Now the reference model design is going to be a three fan design. It does include a back plate. We already talked about the outputs and you do have two eight pin power adapters required with no funky adapters needed in this particular case. When we're talking about minimum power supply for a system, it says 650 watts. That's going to be a little bit different, obviously, with mining, and we'll talk about all of that right now. So on Ethereum, right off the bat, we hit around 58 to 59 mega hash a second. That was without any modifications to the card whatsoever, and that was at 175 watts. Now there's a new feature that is in the overclocking tab of the Radeon software. If you go into the Radeon software, what you'll notice is that there's an option to select fast timing. If you're gonna be mining on Windows, go ahead and do this now. What fast timing is going to net you is another couple mega hash a second, solidly getting you from the 58 mega hash to 59 mega hash to 60 to 61 mega hash just with that setting. Once you've done that, you want to start going in and taking a look, or we wanted to go take a look at overclocking memory. Now with overclocking memory, it does perform very well, but it does perform very similar to other GDDR6 cards. So it's pretty predictable, meaning that all you really need to do is take it and slide it up to about 2100 megahertz, which is where we found the absolute limits on this particular card. And that netted us another couple mega hash a second, taking us from 60 to 61 mega hash a second to 62 to 63 mega hash a second. We were pretty happy with those results and we knew that we basically now just need to work on power consumption. So our power consumption was still around 175 watts. What we ended up doing is down clocking the core as far as we could super impressive that you can actually downclock the core on this particular GPU, the 6800, all the way down to about 1150 megahertz, meaning that you will be able to undervolt the core all the way with whatever is available in the Radeon software. And hopefully once we get Linux drivers and Hive OS and all of that kind of figured out and ironed out, we should be able to get that core clock lower than any other AMD GPU in the past. Because basically on the RX 5700, for example, going below around 15 or 1400 megahertz on the core starts hurting your hash rate. Going to, uh, to 1300 megahertz will definitely tank your hash rate uh, on the 5700. So knowing that we can get the core clock down uh, an additional 150 megahertz over uh, the, the 5700 XT on the 6800 tells me that we're gonna be able to undervolt this beyond the 740 to 750 millivolt range, which should get us under 100 watts. But the only thing I can verify for you guys at this time is that the RX 6800 with overclocking and fast timing enabled, as well as underclocking on the GPU core and undervolting, which the lowest it'll let us take the core voltage down to is 793 millivolts, is going to be 63 mega hash at 125 watts. Now, if we go ahead and plug this into what to mine, your numbers will vary depending on, you know, how much ETH is worth and it's going up, along with how much your power costs and so on. What I can tell you is that based on revenue, Currently, and compared to any other GPU, it has the fastest ROI time at this time of 8.8 .8 months versus the next best bet that I have at the moment, which is the RX 5700 at $350 coming in at around a ROI of 10 months. So we have a faster ROI even without getting the power consumption low 
like lower or as low as that I think that we'll presumably be able to get it. I'm going to be super excited to mess with BIOS, power play settings, and etc. to get you guys the absolute best RX 6800 overclock and BIOS modding settings for mining Ethereum. But at this time, this is what we have. You're going to basically go into your Radeon settings. You're going to undervolt uh, your core clock to, or your core voltage to 793. You're going to underclock the core clock down to 1150. You're going to 